Hello everyone and welcome back to Alan Luthery. Welcome back to my unofficial entry to the Great Guitar Build-Off Challenge 2020. We've made a bunch of progress on the guitar this week, so grab a cup of tea, get comfy and enjoy the video. Real quick, just before the video starts, I want to say a huge thank you to everyone on the channel. Everyone who has watched my videos, who's liked them, left comments, and everyone who has subscribed. This all means a huge amount to me. In the last week, I think my subscribership has tripled, which is amazing, and it's really lit the fire in my belly again for YouTube and for creating content which is something I do enjoy, and I think I have something to offer. You can be the judge of that one. <laughs> really quick, if you aren't subscribed at this point, please, please, please consider it. As I said, it means a huge amount to me, and I get little butterflies in my belly every time I get a new subscriber notification. Uh, I hope you enjoy this video, and hopefully I don't waffle away too much in it. Thank you. While I have most of the wood prepped, ready to go. My binding absolutely is not. So the plan for today is to prepare some binding. So that means getting this to a nice uniform thickness. Then I need to stick the maple veneer to the inside of it as well, to have one homogeneous piece of binding. And then cut slices off it at about, you know, six, seven, maybe eight mil thick. Cool, done and dusted. Okay, so one thing I do need to think about, where is my quarter saw? That's my good edge. And the two faces are pretty, pretty much the same. So I'm gonna glue my veneer onto this side. The veneer I have comes in a big roll like this. Pretty plain Jane maple. But that's fine, we're just applying to the face and all you're gonna see is the very edge of it. It'll just be a pinstripe. That's all it is, it's all I want. It's a bit awkward, but it'll do the finest. Now I can do this real rough, that's pretty fine. I'd rather glue it onto the oak a bit oversized than undersized. This veneer is nice. It's actually got a paper backing on the back of it, which helps with the gluing process. Gluing. With the gluing process. I can't even words. So just apply not too much because wood glue obviously has, well not obviously I suppose, wood glue has water in it which will actually cause the veneer to curl up. So I want to position this just so on this top edge I can see a very small border of maple the whole way around. And push it down and yeah it's already starting to curl up. So I have another call. And then just load it up. This is a new new to me number seven. I haven't restored it yet. I'm quite looking forward to it. And this right here is probably my favorite plane of all. This is my granddad's plane, who unfortunately passed away. But uh, he used to build uh, beehives using this plane, which I love. I love stuff like that. This is, you know, he used it to create things and now I use it to create things. It actually, it had a bad crack here on the cheek, which I, uh, 
I got re or I got welded and then I flattened the sole and thankfully it came out flat. Works a charm. The only thing is the back handle gets loose on it. But uh, I do, I love that plane. I have moved the oak and maple veneer glue up to the side. I swapped out all the planes for clamps and I'm going to leave that overnight so I can get on with flush cutting the horse chestnut top to match the green heart back of the body. So to do that, we need to go over to the router table. To do this, I'm using the four flute double bearing cutter from Radiant Tools, which is an absolutely beautiful piece of kit and an absolutely terrifying. This one is uh, well used, it's been through the wars. There's a bit of life left in it, yeah. It is the next day, and as I said earlier in this video, I removed obviously all the planes and replaced them with clamps. Because I noticed as the glue dried, the entire piece warped much more than I thought it would have. It actually warped so much that it lifted all of the planes. So I dampened the whole thing down and now by dampened it, I pretty much soaked it. So we'll find out now if that works and if we have a usable piece. Yep, thankfully we absolutely do. It's a bit dirty because this chipboard is a bit dirty. What I am going to do now I obviously need to slice this up into appropriately sized binding pieces, but since our maple is oversized and we don't technically have a nice flat square edge to work off, we're going to plane down a side. And that then will be our reference edge for the bandsaw. So this is my lovely Stanley number 18 or 19, I can't quite remember. And gorgeous little plane, it's I believe from 1901 to 1903. Works beautifully. The maple, unfortunately, is the wrong way around. Doesn't really want to play. Going to switch to my number six. Because I want to get one full length shaving. Yeah, that one went the whole way down. That gives me an idea what my binding will actually look like. And I don't know if that's coming up in the video, but the flex are all coming through. And that looks pretty straight to me. Forward to the bandsaw. So the bandsaw is one of my favorite tools. Probably one of the ones I wouldn't particularly want to build guitars without. It's a real jack of all trades. When set up properly, it can make lovely uniform cuts like this. And it's also the best tool for cutting out guitar body shapes. It would definitely be one of the first tools I'd buy in the morning if I had to start again. All right, that went pretty well off the bandsaw. Now, as you would expect, the bandsaw has left some rough marks along the edges of them. So what I found, if I actually taped all of them together and then attached them to, here it is, attached them to this piece again, this will actually hold them all together and it will also hold them flat. And then I can just sand the tops. I was thinking of planing them, but I know the grain direction isn't uniform along the length of some of the pieces so i decided sanding was the way to go all right first of all let's get them reasonably level and i found the best way to do this was to actually start at one side and work my way up so holding them all nice and tight And now that I have kind of the complete stack like this, uh, 
one long strip or one wide strip in fact to attach it to the chipboard this is a, just a little sanding block that I made it has a little bit of cork at the bottom and you can attach just lengths of it and this is an 80 grit because I want to go through this quick enough Just remove all of your tape and we have a couple of lengths of DIY binding. Now I quickly measured it up just last night before I finished up for the day. And it seems about two lengths of this binding will do for a Les Paul style guitar. So we have one Les Paul, two Les Paul, three, four, five and a half. So that's pretty handy. Moving over to the router table to cut some binding channels. This is a half inch top bearing bit that I discovered with the bearing removed gives me the perfect binding channel that I need. It wasn't the absolute cleanest job, so I had to come back later with just a straight template bit, and that gave me perfect crisp line that I needed. After that, I now have the binding channel routed along the entire perimeter of the guitar body. For now, I'm actually going to put this aside because I need to do a little bit more research on how to effectively bend the binding. That's all right, though, because... I'll move on to the neck. Hopefully you can see all this as I do it. I'm using a red pencil, which should be visible. I, I hope it will be. First of all, I have this template, which I made up. I have the center line here and I've drawn a center line in 0.5 millimeter pencil. So it's really, really thin. There's no way you're going to be able to see that on the camera. So with that in place, and just go around and all. And obviously here in the headstock I need wings to be attached. And we'll get to that once the neck has been rough cut. I also marked for the knot, for the knot here. So that's the, just both sides of the knot. Next up I want to know where my headstock is actually going to be. Because I want a 10 degree angle. So I'm setting the zero point there to the front of the knot because I want the nut to have a sl slanted bottom on it. And down here, I'm setting, this has angle gauges, or angle marks the entire way up, so I've set it to 10 degrees here. So there is the front face of my headstock. So the video of the design process didn't go exactly to plan, so I'm just going to bring you an overview. This is our neck heel. I want the neck pocket at 40 millimeters, so I have the heel here at about 45, which should give me enough, give me about 10 millimeters pointing or protruding over the top of the body once installed. There's our heel to neck join. The outline of the neck up to our volute here you can see one of them is a mistake with the red on it and the other one is not and it's that's the one we're cutting and that is the side profile of our headstock so before i cut any of that i need to install the truss rod smack in the middle and I need to set up the jig for that now. This is a super, super handy jig that I made up a good while ago at this stage. Really simple, really simple to use, and it just gives me perfect results every time. I have a separate video that I've done already on it, 
if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about it. Essentially, it's a sled for the router with a centerline drawn on it and it's the correct length for a truss rod. I just set it on the centerline of the neck and away you go. The whole thing takes me 15 minutes, I think, start to finish. Just at the end there, I swapped the router bit for a, I believe it's a 10 mil or a 3 8 inch from the 6 mil quarter inch that I used for the rest of the slot. As you can see, it came out absolutely perfectly. Now it's just a little, I started into, um, for some reason I managed to misalign the very base of it. So that's why, that's where my truss rod actually needs to end. So I'm just gonna knock that out by by hand with chisels here in a minute but the slot comes out real nice real clean real even if you want to know more about the jig i actually have another video just going through it explaining it how it works and everything uh it, very simple jig you know as you can see here it's just a few bits of scrap mdf put together and these are just very quick blocks thinking about making another one at some stage and kind of making it way over engineered. Of course, the truss rod has a square end on the end of it, whereas the router will only give me a rounded channel. 10 minutes with a chisel and it's perfect. After that, over to the bandsaw. Of course, I did realize after this that I've just cut away all of my markings. Whoops. It is fine though, it's mainly just the kind of the length of the neck. So that's just a straight edge. I've actually swapped the blade here at this stage and this is much better, much newer one and it just cuts beautifully through the walnut. I did redraw my guidelines before this. After the bandsaw then, we just need to clean up the headstock face. Back out with the number 18 hand plane and that's my, uh, my number 3, my granddad's number 3. And I have the two marks for the nut, the front and the back of the nut, which I am trying to keep this level to at least one of them. I want to bring it up if I know those lines are square to the fretboard, so if I can sand this until it's perfectly level and in line with those nut lines, then I know I have it right. To get the shape of the neck, the, I am attaching the template here again, bringing it over to the router table and that will flush cut it all perfectly for me. The one problem about this is that you do have to go against the grain on one side, which isn't ideal. And the very end, just here, can be a bit nerve wracking, but if you take it real slow, it comes out fine. That went pretty well. Off she pops. And that is the majority of our neck shaping for the moment. Now, one thing I do need to do is 
add some wings and I have a, an off cut here from another guitar neck that I made and I only need the tiniest amount of extra material onto the sides. So this is going to do perfectly. I'll chop this up in the bandsaw once I figure out exactly what I want. I just made up these two little blocks from that other piece and these will do absolutely perfectly. So the first of which I want to place there and over here you can see the grain on the headstock it goes out nearly 90 degrees and it's reasonably tight so there's no way I was going to be able to get that matching up. I checked through all my scraps and there was nothing there. Simply a little bit of glue. Get your glue spreader. Glue spreaders you can use absolutely anything, your finger, bit of cardboard, anything. This was, you know those um, parts organizer? This is a partition from one of them. And I just kind of filed little ridges along the bottom of it. It works an absolute dream. And I always try to alternate my clamps. One last little thing you can do with these glue joints. I save a little bit of dust from every wood and this is just walnut dust. Just kind of rub it in onto that excess glue. And that just means if there are tiny, tiny little gaps in the glue joint, which there shouldn't be, but just in case, this will fill them. And then put that aside to dry. The last big piece of the puzzle now is the fretboard to prepare. So to slot my fretboards, I use one of these jigs with a table saw blade and a sled. Masking tape and super glue to the jig, lining it up with this is essentially a stainless steel plate with these notches and those notches correspond to a pin that I have installed in a sled which you'll all see you'll see it all in a minute this is a really really great setup to have and I'm really glad I invested in it it's far from the cheapest way to do fretboard slotting but for me it was worth it because I was planning on and have done several, several fingerboards in it and for the repeatability, the accuracy and the time saving, it was worth it to me to invest in it. Now and that's the finished result from that table saw jig, which Hopefully you can see that is a pretty much perfectly slotted fretboard. And this is probably one of the scariest parts of a build, especially when you're using that jig. Since you've cut slots the whole way here now, the fretboard should actually act like acoustic guitar binding and bend a huge amount. So it just feels like you're about to snap the whole thing in into two and fold it over, but no problems. So one last thing we need to just knock off. That is the line for the knot. And we need to chop it at the 23rd fret down here as well. Moving on to the neck. So before installing the truss rod and gluing that all down, I just need to position the fretboard while I still have a center line to work off up here. Mm. 
position that's correct there. And I'm going to use a two millimeter drill bit, which is the same size as a toothpick, just to go very slightly through. I'm going to go through the first fret and one of the frets down there. When it comes time to gluing, then I shall put in the toothpick into the holes and they'll act as locating pins for the fretboard. On to preparing the truss rod into the slot. In it goes, just like that. Happy with that, no problem. And I always think it's good practice just to put a wrap or two around the bottom end of it here. It's probably a little bit too much. Yeah, just take off. And that just gives it a real snug fit on that end. And I will do the same just here. It's a good sign when you have to put on almost no tape. It means the slot is perfectly sized. And then I put a full strip along the top of the truss rod. And just burnish that down. And come back with a sharp knife and just cut right along. Since I've burnished it down, I can see the wood underneath. And I'm leaving about a millimeter of tape overlapping the wood. Perfect. And now this is ready for the fretboard itself. Put them in this end first. Okay. And just cut them flush out of the way. Now I use a big clamping call. This is one I have a channel routed out through the middle of it, so the outsides, oh, there's more pressure going to be exerted along the edges, which is what you want for a fretboard. Just line it up and then start throwing on clamps. And then set this aside and have a go at it tomorrow. The glue has been left dry overnight and we're about ready to remove the clamps. So the last couple of steps that I need to do at this stage before I finish up this video because I'm quite aware it's getting reasonably long at this stage. So I need to flush cut the fretboard to match the neck and then over to the sander to somehow cut the shape of the headstock. I'm going to have to support it up. That's what I'm going to have to do. Okay. Back to using the same radian four fluted double bearing bit. This time it feels a lot safer because a lot more of the bit is hidden away. It really is a great bit though. It leaves a fantastic finish. Highly recommend. It's tough to see from this angle, but I've drawn the outline of the headstock onto the headstock itself. Went over to the bandsaw and really quickly knocked off what I could from there. 
and then just sand up to the line. I taped on that support block you see just under the neck, just so it holds it up. It's really simple, no frills. And there is the finished profile of our neck. So it looks pretty good from the front, obviously the back still square to block and that will be all sort of next week because this is the end of this week's video we got a good bit done i think the body maybe not so much only got the binding channel routed but i have decided what kind of pickups i'm going for and that'll all be revealed next week if you've enjoyed this week's video hold on tight for next week because i think it's going to be even better there'll be more progress done on the guitar and it'll be a lot more action-packed if you've watched all the way here to the end thank you so so much it means a lot to me i hope if you're not already subscribed you'll hit the subscribe button hit the like button onto the video and drop a comment down below even if it's something simple just to say hi it all makes a massive massive difference and it all helps me a huge amount so thank you very much and i hope to see you again next week